All right, everybody, welcome again to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Today, it's a wonderful Monday in the world, and we are doing AMAs with upstream projects. And today, we're going to talk with two folks who are the people behind Caverno, a new CNCF sandbox project, I believe, um, Ritesh Patel and Jim Bhagwadia. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves. We're going to have a nice um, presentation about what Caverno is doing and why. Um, and where it fits into the whole CNCF landscape. And then um, we'll have live Q&A at the end. So Ritesh and Jim, take it away. Hey folks, uh, I'm Ritesh Patel, uh, VP Products and Co-Founder at Nirmata. Hi everyone, this is Jim Bagwadia, Co-Founder and CEO at Nirmata. All right, so let's uh, dive into it. So today we'll talk about, uh, you know, Kiverno. Kiverno is an open source Kubernetes native policy management uh, uh, solution uh, uh, that's uh, now part of CNCF Sandbox project. So here's the agenda. Uh, we'll, you know, dive deeper into why Kiverno, what does it solve? Um, why, why did we feel there was a need uh, for something like Kiverno? And then jump into uh, the technical details of how it works. Uh, we do have some use cases that we can go over to uh, give you folks of you know an idea of, of the kind of problems you can solve using Kiverno. I will discuss uh, some of the other uh, uh, tooling around Kiverno, which uh, more specifically uh, that uh, Nirmata offers to help help uh, ease the the you know. Uh, management of Kiverno policies and, and, and reporting. And then jump into a demo, followed by uh, a quick uh, uh, roadmap and Q&A. So let's, let's jump right into it. Uh, Kiverno actually, uh, you know, you may kind of wonder what, what does Kiverno mean? And Kiverno actually means govern. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a play on, uh, it's, a, it's in Greek, basically it, it's govern and, you know, obviously Kubernetes, uh, uh, the origin of Kubernetes, the word is is uh, from Greek, so we thought it would be uh, appropriate to kind of use uh, Kiverno as uh, as 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 the name of this project because Kiverno is essentially a policy engine uh, for Kubernetes, and uh, policy engine uh, uh, is used typically to 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 govern or for compliance uh, of of uh, various aspects of um, of Kubernetes. So that's why the name Kiverno. Uh, Kiverno uh, the, uh, is a Kubernetes native policy engine, which means that it understands Kubernetes resources, uh, Kubernetes patterns. So it actually is aware of, of, of Kubernetes, Kubernetes constructs. And it's, been, it's, it's designed in a way that it's, it's familiar to Kubernetes users. And essentially there is, um, there is no learning curve. So let's take a step back and understand why uh, do we need policies in, in Kubernetes? What are policies and um, you know, how do they help? So if you're familiar with Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes, uh, you, know, you can configure uh, lots of uh, different resources, uh, whether it's you know, your infrastructure uh, uh, for Kubernetes, whether your app applications or workloads running in Kubernetes, and all of the configuration is essentially done using um, you know yaml right and it, it gets fairly complex some some configuration files could could be you know a few hundred lines and and the the challenge there is now how do you ensure that the configuration can be managed and is secure uh, there are uh, also uh, you know external tools that uh, that for example helm and customize that tweak existing con uh, configuration to uh, adapt it to uh, environments so that's that's how your configuration could change the, the 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 end configuration that ends up in the cluster may be different from from the source depending on where is where uh, your your resources are deployed so you know in in kubernetes uh, there is there are ways to uh, to configure admission controllers and that's where, uh, as a best practice, a lot of the validation for configuration, as well as any modification or mutation of configuration can happen. And that's, that's why, uh, that's the kind of the best place where policies, if any, can be or should be applied. 
So what what Kiverno, uh, what policies do is essentially let you uh, govern or or ensure that the configuration that's being uh, uh, you know applied to Kubernetes is secure. It, it follows your best practices. You know follows the standards, and uh, and and Kiverno is is an engine which does that without. Uh, the user or the developer or the cluster operator having to build something uh, from scratch or build something custom for their environments. So, so that kind of brings us to why Kiverno and and you know I've touched on this briefly in, in in an earlier slide, but with Kiverno our goal uh, when we started out was to enable policies for Kubernetes and make it really, really simple, make it really easy for uh, users to understand and write these policies. So, so Kiverna policies are uh, declarative and, and very easy uh, to manage. Uh, the, and, and when these policies are applied, they generate uh, uh, policy results. Uh, basically, these are you know, violations <clears throat> or, or, or any kind of, any, um, you know, any policies that are violated kind of are re reported in, in the results. Uh, so that it's also is Kubernetes native. Um, these policies are, can be of different types. You know, you could have a validating policy, which can either be an audit mode or an enforce mode, or, or they could actually mutate an existing configuration by, uh, you know, changing parts of, parts of the configuration. Or they could uh, the policy could generate new configuration if it's if in cases where this configuration is required or it's it's missing, and that gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of ensure that the configuration of your Kubernetes uh, applications and resources are configured correctly. Uh, the being Kubernetes native, uh, Kiverno supports all of the Kubernetes resource types and can also support um, uh, custom resources, right? So which is a huge uh, benefits so that you know now you can use Kiverno across the board without having to worry about which resources are supported and, and which are not. And you know, being again being Kubernetes uh, native, Kiverno leverages and understands you know some of the common patterns used in Kiverno, like label selectors, labels and selectors, annotations, owner references, and 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 things like that. Right. So that really makes it very uh, easy for somebody to to you know, start with Kiverno and start using it with Kubernetes. Now, just a little bit of uh, background on the project itself. So Kiverno uh, today uh, is, an open, uh, is open source and a CNCF sandbox project. It, it uh, got the, uh, it, it was added to sandbox uh, projects in uh, November last year. And since then we've been tracking the downloads and it's almost uh, approaching 2 million downloads in you know, about three and a half months, right? And which is which is huge. Uh, it 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 went to one million downloads uh, about three or four weeks ago, and now we are almost there at two, you know, two uh, two million downloads. So, seeing a lot of uh, you know uh, interest in the community, uh, you know, a lot of folks are, are looking at it and and like the simplicity, ease of use of Kiverno, um, and and there ha there are other projects uh, in in uh, in. Um, uh, CNCF and in the community like OP, uh, Open Policy Agent, uh, which which uh, which do uh, policy management, but uh, uh, Kiverno kind of because of its simplicity has been gaining a lot of uh, a lot of interest and 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 lot of users. So uh, definitely uh, do check it out if if um, you know you're interested. So question when we talk about Kiverno, obvious question that comes up is, you know, how is Kiverno different from open policy agent? And um, here are some points of differentiation. Um, you know, uh, open policy agent was uh, was actually predated Kubernetes, was built as a general purpose policy engine, and then adopted or adapted to Kubernetes. Um, uh, whereas Kiverno itself uh, is, is, was designed for Kubernetes. It's Kubernetes native. The policies are Kubernetes native resources in Kiverno, whereas in Open Policy Agent, uh, the, the actual policies are defined in a language called Rego, which could, which is something that uh, a user would have to run, learn to write policies. There is a, a, a project uh, called Gatekeeper, which, which works or integrates with Open Policy Agent that 
simplifies or, or that tries to uh, adapt, uh, adapt uh, Kubernetes resources and, and um, uh, to, to define policies, but ultimately uh, the underlying enforcement and all of the, all of the, the policy processing, everything hap happens um, based on um, in based on policies written in Rego. Also, a few other things about uh, Kiverno, which uh, are not necessarily available or possible with uh, OPA, OPA Gatekeeper. So Kiverno is is you know secure by default. You don't need to call out any external systems for any processing, and you know because it's it's an admission control path. This is very important, and uh, also a few other scenarios that Kiverno. Um, uh, enables are around, uh, you know, just around uh, it kind of the if this and that paradigm where if uh, if you if a particular configuration, you know, if you check for a particular configuration and if it exists, you can actually write policies to uh, do certain things. These are very easy to do in Kiverno. And being Kubernetes native and uh, uh, Kiverno policies are also Kubernetes native. It um, it lends itself very well to tools like you know uh, customize Helm and can you you can use GitOps to actually apply policies across your uh, clusters. So really, uh, just in a nutshell, there are several benefits um, that that you get uh, with Kiverno uh, in terms of ease of use as well as uh, the other capabilities. Let's dig a little bit deeper in 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 terms of you know uh, at a high level from a, uh, from the policy perspective for Kiverno or OPA, and we'll go a little bit more details into how Kiverno policies are defined. But here, this is just to show a dip, uh, kind of the difference between Kiverno uh, and OPA. On the left hand side, you see the Kiverno policy, which is um, you know if you are uh, familiar with Kubernetes and have used um, Kubernetes resources like deployments, pods. This will be very familiar to you. Uh, it's very, uh, you know, straightforward in terms of create, writing these policies. There are certain keywords like match and validate, and we'll talk about those a little bit later. But um, overall, in this policy, uh, just um, validates and checks if uh, you know the, the file system is read only. On the right hand side, you see the same policy uh, written in in uh, in Rego, and this is this would be something that you would um, use in OPA. So this is just quickly show slight difference between Kiverno and and OPA. So next we'll talk about how Kiverno works. Uh, I mentioned earlier, Kiverno uh, is a policy engine that runs inside the cluster and it uh, registers you know as an as an admission controller and then it every request that comes in through the api server uh, is is a process <clears throat> through kiverno and you know, policies uh, that are configured in in kiverno are applied to to these requests so it, it kiverno gets an admission review request it uh, applies these policies the policies uh, depending on on the configuration, may generate uh, certain events or a policy uh, policy violation, and then the response is sent back. If the policy is configured as um, as audit only, then it's really uh, the 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 it's just in a kind of like a report only mode, and um, there's no the request itself is not uh, blocked. But if the uh, policy is configured as 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 a uh, uh, you know to uh, configure to uh, uh, validate and block then uh, the the request can also be blocked uh, if the if the policy fails so this is really at a high level uh, how kiverno works uh, in kubernetes here is a quick view of the policy structure so when you're defining a policy in Kiverno, uh, a policy contains one or more rules, and each rule uh, contains a match or exclude criteria, which could be uh, mapped to <clears throat> Kubernetes uh, resource kinds, names. It could be you could use label selectors, namespace selectors, uh, as well as user roles, groups, and so on. And then you have uh, the the 
the various um, actions that Kiverno uh, can take, you know, uh, that's uh, either validate, mutate, or generate. So, so these are the high level blocks, and we'll talk about each of these um, blocks in the next few slides. So just to map the, uh, the, the, the structure we saw earlier, uh, here we have um, the same kind of, uh, uh, the Kiverno policy showing the same structure where you have uh, in, on the top line number eight, we have the, the match block where in this case it's matching uh, all resources of kind pod. And then on line number 12, we have validate block, which actually um, does the, you know, does the validation uh, for, the, for every pod. And in this case, it checks if um, the security context run as non-root, et cetera, true. So, so this kind of gives a quick idea of the, the policy structure. So validate policy is um, essentially, uh, it, it kind of matches uh, the fields that are defined in the validate block and, and determines if, uh, if your configuration, uh, you know, matches the, or, or matches the fields and, and, you know, it is, it, uh, um, it's validated for, um, it validates the configuration by matching all of the fields. So in this case, you could have patterns, you can match, uh, you know, for existence of fields, you can match for, uh, you know, uh, with operators, you can have, uh, you can check if values, you know, are greater than equal to or not equal to. So a lot of the, uh, there's a um, lot of flexibility in terms of uh, doing various types of uh, matching uh, in, in, in these policies in the backward for validate. Next on the mutate policy, so here uh, you can, when, uh, when you want to mutate an existing config, you can specify a, kind of a patch, a JSON patch or strategic merge patch to uh, update the incoming resource. So for example, here, if you want to, let's say, uh, add a port or, or um, you know, insert like a secret name, uh, you can do that by uh, um, specifying the patch in, in the policy, and you can even do that conditionally. So you can even you can only add a configuration if it's not there, or um, if 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 uh, uh, for example, you can even have if then condition where for certain port names you can use um, for uh, for certain only if port names start with certain string you can you know. Uh, add the add the value and so on. So this gives you again a lot of flexibility to to manipulate um, incoming uh, incoming configuration, and uh, it's actually very important. There are use cases where you know if you want to add certain labels on on every resource or or, or on specific resources, um, you can now ensure that that's done uh, uh, by creating a mutate policy. A lot of times uh, these labels could be used by other tools for security, for networking, for monitoring, and so on. So, so you know, Kiverno through mutate policies uh, allows you to address some of those uh, use cases. And then the the, the final uh, type of policy is a generate policy, where you can actually uh, generate certain resources. So, so on the uh, the example here on the right hand side kind of shows how you can generate a network policy uh, to deny all traffic. Um, this could be your default network policy for your namespace, and uh, it can, you know, it, it would uh, be created maybe anytime a new namespace is created. So there is a, usually a trigger which can trigger the generate of, um, of uh, these, uh, these resources. In this case, uh, we are generating a network policy. And it could also, you could use to clone existing resources. And, um, and this uh, essentially allows, gives you flexibility to ensure that, uh, you know, certain required resources like network policies, uh, quotas, limits, uh, things of that sort are always available um, uh, in, your, uh, in your cluster or for your applications.
when these policies are uh, configured, once these policies are configured and and and, and as they are processed uh, based on uh, based on uh, incoming requests, uh, there are uh, uh, violations that that can be generated. So here is an example in Kubernetes uh, to see the policy result. So on the top, you see an example of uh, uh, showing the on, uh, of the policy results for a particular namespace. In this case, default namespace. It shows that you know nine, nine uh, policies uh, were passed and one failed. And you can get get more granular details. Um, you know, like um, like the exam, like the second screenshot here to to see which policies failed and and what exactly. Uh, why exactly uh, the policy uh, uh, failed, right? So you can get more details in terms of um, the violation so that the violation can be fixed. So that's kind of, you have that information. Again, it's all inside your cluster. You don't need an external tool to, to retrieve that information. So uh, this was a quick overview of some of the features, but there's lots of advanced features uh, that are being built. And you know, this is an ongoing kind of um, uh, as as community comes up with more use cases, we're building more and more features. <clears throat> so we talked a little bit about you know some of the anchors, operators like uh, you know uh, compare comparators and and if then else and so on. Um, you can also have uh, variables. Uh, you can actually uh, um, point to certain um, uh, certain parts of your config uh, using JMS path, James path. And uh, you can also look up data, external data, um, you know, from from config map or through API calls. And this lets, uh, this allows you to kind of um, uh, in check or, or uh, uh, trigger, you know, violations by checking Data that may not be part of the incoming request and in, or, or part of um, uh, part of the the resource configuration. You can also set up uh, deny rules. Uh, one thing that's interesting is auto generation of pod controller rules. So if you have policies for pods, they automatically get applied to uh, pod controllers like deployments, uh, stateful sets, jobs, and so on. And then finally, uh, Kiverno can also be run in uh, offline mode. Uh, so it, you don't, uh, there's a command line for Kiverno which can be used uh, offline so that you can actually check, check for uh, violations in your configuration if it's in Git or you know, before your config, uh, check for your violations before your configuration is applied uh, to, um, to your cluster. So that's, Definitely useful. Uh, you know, you want to don't want to wait till uh, till the configuration is in your cluster to check. You can check upfront, address those issues uh, before applying your resource uh, changes to your uh, cluster. So, uh, you know, we talked about a few use cases, but there's more uh, use cases emerging as as uh, as uh, Kiverno gets uh, more widely used. Uh, we talked briefly about security validation and enforcement. There's also uh, the Kiverno enables you to do fine grain RBAC. Uh, so based on um, you know, uh, in, based for example, uh, when namespaces are created, you can auto create some of the roles, role bindings, etc. Depending on the uh, namespace name or labels or any other criteria. Uh, Kiverno is uh, be enables uh, multi-tenancy uh, in in Kubernetes uh, again through uh, some of the automation by generating um, uh, RBAC rules by generating network policies can generate uh, quotas and uh, you know we're also working with uh, various six to kind of enable this um, uh, enable uh, more secure multi-tenancy across uh, within within Kubernetes um, you know for for your applications. Uh, auto labeling is a use case we talked about earlier. Uh, also, for uh, a lot, we are seeing patterns like you know sidecars uh, uh, being used in, in for various uh, um, various tools like you know for 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 example for service mesh and Istio sidecar. It's very common to use sidecars. There are other scenarios like if you want to mount certificates or or uh, if you want to uh, you know. Uh, Fetch, you know, continuously fetch data from some uh, some uh, endpoint. 
uh, for things like that, you know, sidecars are being used, like for example, uh, even for uh, you know award certificates and so on. So Qwerno also can can because it can mutate existing configuration, you can create sidecars using Qwerno. So you don't have to write a new operator to do that. And then finally, you can have very uh, con conditional rules like if this then that uh, for Kubernetes, uh, and, and that opens up a whole set of use cases. Uh, you know, and for your uh, in your in your uh, Kubernetes deployment, so it's very flexible, and um, you know we're happy to kind of if you have other use cases that we have not covered or have not seen, it'd be great to hear uh, about those and see how we can help with using Kubernetes. One area uh, where you know uh, we really see a lot of interest today is around you know pod security. Um, in the past, uh, pod security policies have been defined using PSPs, but uh, uh, PSPs have been marked for deprecation uh, by the uh, by the community. Uh, and there are other uh, options and alternatives being discussed, and we are part of those discussions. But uh, today, <clears throat> if you want to, uh, if you are interested in uh, in, in the pod security policies. Uh, Kiverno provides a very easy way of, of achieving that. We already have a set of policies, uh, you know, in our on the Kiverno uh, website, on the, uh, in, in, uh, which kind of address all of the requirements, uh, you know, for for pod security, and they are based on on levels, you know, uh, like we uh, uh, like the like PSPs and and uh, some of the discussions that are happening in the community. So it would be um, all, uh, you could should uh, if you're interested in uh, alternatives to PSPs uh, for while uh, you know community is working on you know the next um, iteration of PSP, it would be great to check out Qwerno and let us know if uh, if that addresses uh, the security needs. We a lot of a lot of folks in the community that we know are already using Qwerno for pod security, so something you know you can try out and. Um, you know, let us know uh, if, if there are gaps that we can address. So uh, before we jump into the demo, the one thing I want to quickly touch on is, uh, you know, as as uh, Kiverno gets uh, used in Kubernetes and it's, it's as it's more wide, widespread, uh, you know, we're seeing uh, some requirements around managing policies at scale across clusters, uh, across multiple clusters, Ensuring you know consistent deployments uh, and uh, and so on and so we've created a, you know a, a, a cloud-based solution at Nirmata to help manage policies at scale. So through Nirmata you can actually deploy policies uh, across clusters uh, you know using GitOps. There's concept of policy groups. So you can define different policy groups, like say for pod security or for multi-tenancy. And then these groups, uh, these policy groups can be applied <clears throat> uh, either automatically to new clusters or they can apply be applied to specific clusters. Um, so you can manage it very easily instead of having to deal with each cluster individually, right? And then the ongoing challenge of keeping your policies up to date um, and automating that deployment can also happen, um, you know, very easily with uh, with the, our integration with Kiverno. With the integration of Nirmata with Kiverno. And then <clears throat> Kiverno generates a lot of violations, right? So, depending on the size of your cluster and the number of pods and the number of applications running, you could have tons of, uh, you know, policy violations, you know, failures, uh, and so on. And um, policy reports are available in the cluster, but uh, through uh, our integration with Kiverno, through, uh, you can actually uh, get a very granular report. Of, of the violations and not just get the report, but then also understand what the uh, what the problem is and then, you know, either uh, get get uh, help on remediating that problem or filing, you know, the tickets uh, to kind of get that problem remediated, uh, you know, from the application owner and so on. So uh, through the integration, we complete the, the full life cycle and of managing Kiverno policies and, and Getting visibility into Kiverno violations, you know, at at scale, right? If you have multiple clusters, 
that you're managing, this becomes very, very important. Next, uh, we'll jump into the demo. So I'll stop sharing and let Jim uh, take over from here. There we go. Yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just demonstrate, you know, how you would as a new user get started with Kiverno, what you can do with it. We'll look at a few different examples. Uh, we'll look at, you know, like Ritesh mentioned, pod security policies get a lot of attention. So we'll start with those, see what Kiverno can do in that area, and then also look at some more advanced policies. So I'll just go, you know, just again, going to the Kiverno site, if I go to the documentation, and I'll, we'll click on installation. So we see there's a bunch of different ways to install. There's a Helm chart. But for this, what I want to do is just install using a command line so we can kind of look, take a look behind the scenes and see what's going on, right? So I'm just going to copy this command, which is a single line to um, pull down all the YAMLs from the Kiverno Git repo uh, and install into my local cluster, right? So if I do kubectl get namespace, you'll see I, I'm just using Docker for Windows here. And uh, on this, I'm going to run um, you know, this command line that we copied and have it install Kiverno, right? So we see there's a bunch of CRDs. That's the, all of these that came in, about like uh, six or seven different CRDs, including policy reports. One interesting thing I want to mention about policy reports is these are not unique to Kiverno. In fact, the policy reports are being developed, uh, you know, in, in collaboration with the work group policy, the policy working group in the Kubernetes community. And the intent is to make these same CRs available to any other tool that wants to report policy results um, in, you know, in, in, uh, in a Kubernetes cluster, right? So this provides a standard way of reporting um, policy violations independent of the engine or the tool that's producing it. And there's some work being done to take you know, things like Kubebench and also adapt uh, it to these policy reports Falco is being discussed as another candidate, et cetera. So, so once these CRDs are installed, we also see that Kiverno created a service account. Uh, there's also a few other things done. And what's also interesting is there's some webhooks created, right? So um, now if we look at our namespaces again, we should see a Kiverno namespace. Uh, if I do, you know, minus N Kiverno, and if we, let's say, uh, do pods, we should see that we have a single pod running, uh, which is what we expect at this point, right? So now let's go ahead and, you know, I don't have any policies. And if I do kubectl uh, get cpol, which is short for cluster policy, it will say I don't have any resources. Because the CRD is installed, I can actually now use something like Kubectl explain. And I can say policy, um, so Kiverno both has a cluster policy, which is CPOL and just policy, which is a namespace policy. And if I say policy spec, it will tell me, you know, because it's integrated again with Kubernetes, I can see right here what I can put into a policy. So I see I have a background option, which is a Boolean. I have a set of rules in the policy, like Ritesh was explaining. And then I have a validation failure action, which can be set to either enforce or audit, right? And if you go further, so on, it's very straightforward. And of course, if you have your, you know, Visual Studio Code or other things integrated with Kubernetes, you get all this help and, you know, schema, et cetera, now also in your um, IDE, right? So makes it easy to write policies, check the syntax, things like that. But here I can see that uh, the, this is the description of rules. But so far, I don't have any policies. I just have Kiverno installed. So let's go ahead and you know get some policies, right? So I'm gonna go back to the Kiverno site and we'll click on policies. Um, and I see I have pod security, best practices and other. So let's go to pod security. And like Ritesh mentioned, um, here the way these policies are organized is based on the pod security standards. So if you're not familiar with those, these are, these are great to you know, review and look at, because uh, what uh, the Kubernetes pod security standards help you do 
is they organized um, you know, the pod security controls into three categories. So there's privileged pods, which is basically unrestricted. There's baseline, which is, you know, you, is typically used as a default. So this is minimally restrictive. And then there's restricted, which is the highest level of security itself, right? And then it lists every control uh, within the pod security, security context, uh, structures, and the allowed settings, et cetera, for those. Now the, you know, the, um, the cap which is being developed, which is most likely gonna be called pod isolation policies, is also gonna be based on pod security levels. So again, it's important uh, in pod security standards. So it's important to kind of keep these in mind and then you'll be able to apply these these one of these levels to namespaces um, in this upcoming you know cap, uh, which will be uh, pod isolation policies. So, anyways, going back to the Kiverna policies, as you see, they are organized to default. Uh, so this is actually baseline. Um, it it got renamed from default. So uh, this is the baseline setup policies, and this is restricted. If I go into default, we'll see you know each policy that's you know part of this. If I click on any one of this, like for example, let's say the required default proc mount, so it is checking it both for init containers and containers that if a proc mount is specified, it has to be default. It cannot be changed from that setting, right? Um, but there's other, of course, several other policies. If we go back to you know the restricted and look at some of the more stronger or the tighter control policies, you'll see things like require you know that run as non-root, which is pretty important for non-privileged pods uh, to make sure both init containers as well as containers are always run as a non-root user, right? So let's go back you know to this main pod security page and what we have over here it's showing me a one line command um, so it uses customize it pulls down policies from this git repo and then it's just using kubectl to apply them right i'm going to take that and let's see what happens if we apply to our cluster um, so i'm going to you know it's a this takes a few seconds to pull down all of the YAMLs. And once that's down, what we should see is it will apply um, into our cluster itself, right? So we see about like a, about 10 or so policies got applied. And if we go back and look at the cluster policies, we should see that these are now enforced. Now, what's interesting is if I go, let's actually, you know, look at this, if I go to one of these policies, um, if you notice when I was browsing through the policies, most of them are written at the pod level, right? But as Ritesh mentioned, one of the things Kiverno does by default is because it understands the relationship between pod and pod controllers, it will, let's take a look at that, you know, root policy. Kiverno will automatically generate policies for different pod controllers. And of course, you can control the settings. So if I say kubectl uh, get, you know, let's say cpol, I'm going to do this and do minus o yaml. And then I'm going to just to kind of get uh, better, we'll use kubectl neat, which is a really handy plugin if you want to remove things like, um, you know, which you don't want to see, like all of the metadata and the, or the owner references, things like that from the YAML. So you're, if you notice what happened is when I applied this policy, it was just written, the rule was written to match a pod. But in addition to a pod, what happened is Kiverno automatically generated policies for you know, most of the standard pod controllers. And again, this can be you know, tuned. You can specify different annotations to control uh, which you want to, if you want to restrict, for example, only to deployments and not to daemon sets or something like that, right? But here, what I wanted to make sure is now we do have all of these uh, generated. It's this one's for a cron job. Uh, this other one is for all of these, you know, the more standard quad controllers as we see. 
So pretty neat that I have now all of this installed. So let me try and run a simple workload. Um, you know, I think I have an Nginx pod. Um, so I'm just gonna say create minus F and let me check if this is in my tempter. Yeah, so, okay. So immediately Kiverno is saying, and because these policies were set to enforce, it's saying that running as root is not allowed it's telling me what exactly got violated and it's saying that run as root must be true um, must be set to true um, or run as non-root must be set to true uh, both for init containers as well as containers right so that was since that was violated in my yaml uh, it's you know basically block this particular configuration itself so now let's try something a little bit more intrusive, right? So I'm gonna actually use this site, which is pretty handy. Um, if you haven't seen it, it's, uh, the site is Bishop Fox and it's called Bad Pods. And as the name suggests, these are pods which are misbehaving, right? So pods which are misconfigured um, to allow, you know, all sorts of, um, I guess, uh, oh, to basically be open where if you want to, you know, um, you know, allow host bid or access to host network or other namespaces, uh, all of that is fairly open, right? So here I'm gonna go into, uh, let's check and see. So this, the, you know, which one we wanna do, let's go into everything allowed, which is probably the worst you can do, right? And we'll take a quick look at the YAML. We'll actually go to the deployment just to see how that works. Um, and, you know, uh, we'll look at it. So this is basically allowing, you know, different, it's saying privilege true. It's mounting host, which is also a bad thing to do. Um, it's all, and then allowing all of our, you know, host namespaces to true, right? So let's grab that. And what we wanna do is we'll go to the raw YAML and we'll run that uh, in our cluster, right? So I'm gonna now do kubectl create minus F and we'll give it that whole YAML and see what happens. So now we see a lot more warnings or a lot more you know, errors coming back from our admission controller, which is what we expect. So it's saying that, hey, you don't, you know, don't allow host namespaces, don't use hostpath, uh, it's a don't privilege, so all of this got blocked, which is, and of course, the other error we saw before, which is run as non-root. So this is how, you know, straightforward and simple it can be to, you know, to set these policies. These policies are very flexible. You can tune them based on, you know, like Ritesh was explaining, uh, a lot of different selectors, um, and, you know, I have some examples in here. So this is actually a different policy. It mutates uh, or uh, this is generating um, a network policy. But if you look at another policy, like which also can mutate things. Um, so let's, yeah, this is an example of a mutate policy. Um, it matches also pods, but you can write your, your selectors based on several you know, co constructs, including namespace labels, et cetera, right? So very flexible, very simple, you know, to apply some of these. Um, one th other thing I want to quickly show is how, you know, you know, Ritesh also mentioned some features like uh, being able to select and get external data, right? So very often you want to write a policy, but you want to then, you know, leverage data from things like config maps, which are very natural in Kubernetes. In fact, um, you know, in the, in the community, one of the policies that I was just working with somebody to develop is to make sure that workloads, um, workload identities are protected based on the image name. So, you know, what the author did, which is pretty nice, is use the config map to make sure that a certain service account um, can only be used for certain images, right? And uh, they're managing this uh, the data through a config map, but then it's a very generic policy to do that. Another common example is to you know make sure your ingresses are unique uh, within a particular um, you know cluster, right? Your host names for your ingress, I should say, are unique. 
So Kiverno has this um, ability to use James Path and also to do API look calls. So this is a combination of using those two features. So just going through the structure of the policy, this policy matches ingresses. And then there's a context which where you can populate different data and different variables. So here, what it's doing is it's saying, um, it's doing a call to, you know, uh, to the API server, uh, which is this API call construct. It's getting all the ingresses from the API server, and then it's applying this James path on it to extract out all of the hosts. And then it's checking if that host is, you know, the host from the request object is already, is included in that list of existing hosts, it's gonna deny the operation, right? So fairly complex logic, but pretty straightforward, um, you know, once you kind of get the hang of how this is structured. And the interesting thing is, you know, if you use kubectl um, and, you know, just through the command line, all of this can be tested very easily. So I can do kubectl, um, I think it's get minus, minus raw. Yeah, so I, if you do kubectl get minus minus raw, so here I don't have any ingresses in this cluster, but um, you can kind of see what that looks like. And even if you want to test the, the James path expression, you can use JP, uh, which is the command line for that. And if I go back to my policy, let's grab what this looks like. And of course, if I had some ingresses, this would maybe make more sense. But uh, if I apply this right now, it will come back with an uh, empty string, right? Because there's no, um, there's nothing. So it just came back with an empty list over here, as you see. If I had any ingresses with hosts, it would show me a list, a string list of those ingress hosts. And then in my policy, what I'm doing is I'm checking to make sure that um, the host, which is coming from the request object, is not you know um, already used within the cluster. So you know this is a simple example which shows again how you can combine some of these. The other thing you know which is very interesting is there's um, uh, you know policies I think Ritesh mentioned also for multi-tenancy. I can show a few examples of you know those. Um, what we're seeing is first of all you know adding labels to namespaces is is a very common use case. And there is, a, you know, there's a session um, that, uh, you know, I'm going to be doing uh, along with Adrian Ludwin, who leads a hierarchical namespace controller, a project that's also being developed uh, in, in the community. Uh, we're going to be doing this at the Cloud Security Day for KubeCon EU, where we're going to talk about how Kiverno and HNC can work together and manage both namespaces and then HNC allows, you know, sub namespaces within a namespace. So how you can kind of allow that those controls. So here, anyways, in this policy, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's saying that if there's a namespace created, except by cluster admins or by the HNC manager, go ahead and inject like the user info. Uh, and then you can also do more complex things, like you could say, okay, maybe I want three types of namespaces. I want a small, medium, large. And based on that, now I'm going to configure, um, you know, different quotas and different things for my uh, tenants, right, for my users. So all of that can be fairly easily done. You can also generate very fine-grained roles and permissions. So only the, the, the person who requested that namespace, the owner will get permissions to then delete that namespace. Uh, things like that can be then, you know, um, uh, generated on the fly. So these are Kiverno policies to do those kind of things. So we'll share this repo once, once you know, we, we have this finalized for the session, but this is just a quick example of how now you can use the power of, you know, leveraging labels uh, and then based on automatically generating um, different, you know, configurations uh, for those namespaces. And of course, you can also add like validation logic to make sure uh, that only the, the right settings, uh, like in this example, it was requiring that each namespace um, only have a certain, you know, uh, can only be used with a certain uh, suffix, right? So dash SM 
or medium or large. And, and if it doesn't have those, it would be rejected itself. So these kind of things, you know, you can combine, you know, validate, mutate, and generate to get exactly the right behaviors you want for your cluster. And once these policies are set, they can, they're very much data driven. So, um, you know, the, the configurations itself can be easily automated in there. Okay, so one last thing I wanted to show, you know, before we uh, switch is, you know, uh, in Kiverno, I think like Ritesh also mentioned, and as we were looking at, uh, there's this ability to, um, you can, um, uh, create, it creates policy reports. And something our, one of our community member um, created and has made available, this is also an open source project. Uh, he created something called a policy reporter, which takes this policy report and also provides a nice graphical UI on it. He's also got the ability to push this to Grafana Loki and Elasticsearch and uh, create other notifications. But really nice example of how, you know, you can now view this graphically, you can share this inside a single cluster. So just wanted to highlight that. So if you're looking for a single cluster tool to, um, you know, visualize these policy reports and even create notifications when these get created, uh, definitely check out this policy reporter project. Um, and, and, you know, we're, uh, there's also work in progress, by the way, to take more Kiverno metrics uh, and push these to, you know, um, uh, to Prometheus, uh, which could then be, of course, displayed in various UIs and dashboards like Grafana and others as well. But this is more focused on the policy report. The other work that we're starting now is to build, to, to push engine metrics and engine statistics out as well. All right, so let me stop there. I know we have about five minutes left for the hour, so would love to see if there's any other questions, thoughts, comments uh, that we can help answer. Um, and, you know, again, like there's uh, plenty of documentation and if you want to reach out to us, uh, feel free to reach out on the Kiverno Slack, uh, which this is the, on the Kubernetes Slack, the Kiverno channel itself. Well, that was one thing I was actually noticing is that your documentation is awesome. So um, congrats you. on that, because I think that's one of the things that drives communities um, and really helps people adopt. We have a, a couple people on um, the call that that had um, some uh, questions. Uh, Paul Mori, um, if you want to pop yourself out of mute and onto the screen, and Kirsten Newcomer. Yeah, uh, so uh, I heard a lot about pods. I didn't hear whether you can write policies around um, custom resources. So like say that I have a custom resource for my own bespoke controller that creates pods. Um, it contains something that's like pretty close to a pod spec. Can I write a, a Kyverno policy on it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, so one of the things right from the beginning Kyverno has supported is, uh, you know, also full custom resources. And um, it does help if the custom resource schemas are structural. So if they're structural, what Kiverno can also do is can validate the various paths and fields for that custom resource policy. If they're not, that validation doesn't occur, but Kiverno will still apply the policies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and how about uh, if I have like an aggregated API server, can I write uh, uh, policies against APIs that another API server might bring in? So you can make calls to an aggregated API server, right? So through the API call construct, if you, for example, if you want to pull metrics, things like that, that would work. Um, if there are resource definitions, yes, then those can still be, um, you know, uh, looked up and then um, policies can be applied to those. Okay. All right. Thank you. And, sure. And, um, there's one question, Chris, Kirsten, in the chat. Mikey's asking, um, do you need a, a CNI to enforce the policies? So for network policies, yes. If you're generating a network policy, you will still need a CNI uh, to provide that runtime, you know, kind of um, uh, to, to make sure that, you know, the right segmentation exists on the network layer. But for other policies like pod security, et cetera, those are applied directly with the API server. and uh, Kiverno itself will block configurations that are violating, you know, the, the policies you set. 
Kirsten, take it away. Sure. Thanks. Oh, but Mikey, Mike had a, Mikey had a follow up. Is, so the, is the, yeah, go ahead. Is the mutate policy in cache until validate is run? Yes, so there is a there is a ordering in, in you know the admission controls. So um, the validate will occur to you know um, at the end. So all of the mutation logic will occur, and then once that's done, then you get a chance to sort of validate. There's also a way to reinvoke admission controllers. So Kiverno by default, when it installs itself, it tries to be the last admission controller to receive. So there are, you know, there are some customers who will use both OPA and Kiverno, um, you know, for various reasons. And in that case, you know, you could still run one particular policy and then uh, register to re-receive uh, any mutate results. Great. Okay, so take it away. Um, thanks. So I, I had um, kind of a, a question about network policy generation as well. Um, how do you inform the generation of that network policy? Are you using uh, config data to, to inform that or is there a, you know, or is that optional kind of, how do you decide on, on what's going to be in that policy that's generated? Right. Yeah. So the, the few things, right? So the, Trigger to generate the policy could be the creation of a namespace, could be the setting of a label, um, or the setting of an annotation itself. So one pattern is if you're using, if you want some variations and you want to control, you know, like for example, uh, what exactly gets generated, you could use labels and based on labels generate, you know, have templates for different types of network policies. And that would be, yeah, one quick way of, you know, um, of changing that. You can also do things like, because Kiverno can look up the namespace, can match the namespace selectors. You can say that if for certain namespaces and if there is an annotation on that namespace, then based on that, maybe you want to trigger a different uh, network policy. So then you would have two different generate rules, one for each. So, you know, a few different ways of managing those kind of variations and handling that. Great, thank you. That's helpful. Um, and I know we're come, we're pretty much right at the top of the hour. Um, I'm actually I have two questions, uh, but but I'm going to pick one of them. Do you have thoughts on uh, kind of uh, policies or ways that we as a community might move forward to kind of apply policies to respond to events in the runtime? Yeah, great question, right? And something that um, we have been thinking about, there's been discussion also in the policy working group about what other triggers, so admission controls and configuration changes, of course, are one, one trigger, but it would be very interesting to also have a set of, you know, defined runtime triggers. Uh, there's also discussion, um, you know, about um, authorization checks, right? So. Uh, somebody in the community was asking about, you know, the, uh, there's a self-subject review request that gets sent out uh, from the API server when, when there's an authorization check. So, it, you know, for having some more granular policies on that. But, yeah, to your point, like if there's other runtime events, um, even those could be potentially used for triggers. Uh, but it's something that it's not supported right now in Kiverno, but we're very open to that. and interested in hearing more about the use cases and how that could be standardized. Great. Thanks so much. That's it from me. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming today. It, it's, it's wonderful to have these upstream talks um, on Mondays because uh, I, I really didn't know that much about Kiverno before this that we, I was pretty OPA-centric um, in my understanding of policy management and such. Um, so it's really helpful to, to have the context set. And so I think everybody appreciates that as well as Jim, awesome um, deep dive and demo there today too. So, um, well, definitely you're in the sandbox now. Um, yes. The road ahead, more, more production users, more people using it, more feedback on it. Hopefully, incubation and graduation into the you know the real world today, um, sometime soon. Absolutely. And we'll definitely um, get you back on as it matures and we get um, further down the path. And 
Um, congratulations on, on getting into the sandbox and getting it um, to this state. Uh, again, um, if you're interested in this um, topic, uh, these guys are pretty active in some of the SIGs and the CNCF, as well as, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the documentation is rock solid. So um, good on that. That's As a community person, that's one of my key uh, tests, whether we can um, keep something going forward. Um, and definitely, when you get a new release, new features, new functions, reach out to us, Ritesh and Jim, and, and we'll have you back. So um, mm -hmm. good work, good luck, and um, thank you. Thanks, thanks again for sharing the information with us today.